Each year, competitive Fortnite players rake in hundreds of thousands of dollars from events throughout the year. How well you do in these tournaments is a direct result of how prepared you are. As the ceiling for top players in Fortnite is constantly being elevated with each new event, pre-tournament preparations become significantly more important. What's going on guys? This is not your ordinary guy. This is your motivation guy. I was born to motivate you to be great. So today, I'm excited to announce a new series on Pro Guides, Advanced Guides. Okay, so this series is geared toward any player who strives to compete at the highest level in Fortnite. Today, we're gonna be exploring everything that you need to do to prepare for an event. So make sure to check out our pro coaching service as well as our new VOD review system to get better quickly. Link can be found below. Here we go, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? A stab, bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. There are a variety of Fortnite events hosted by both Epic Games themselves and third-party organizers. With a variety of tournaments comes a variety of formats. So certain tournaments like Cash Cups are one-day tournaments with a total of three hours of play. Tournaments like FNCS and DreamHack are events with three rounds, opens, semifinals, and finals. And a total of nine hours of play with three-hour increments. The preparation needed for these different tournament types is fundamentally different. So in Cash Cups, there are no rounds. So in turn, there are no breaks. From start to finish, you're playing the tournament all the way through, man, with an adjustment period only in between games. Tournaments such as FNCS or DreamHack have three rounds with a 24-hour break in between rounds. All tournaments outside of the finals round of three-round tournaments use skill-based matchmaking. This means that you're going to be playing against players with a similar amount of points as you. This is extremely important, guys, to consider when crafting a strategy going into the event. In Cash Cups with the wide player base and there only being one round, all of your preparation and general strategy should be established before that event session. In tournaments that have three rounds, okay, you need to prepare for each session individually. This means that fundamental strategy could and should change going into each session. For example, all right, if you make it to the finals of a tournament and know your drop is going to be contested every game, but notice an uncontested drop is available, it would be a smart choice, man, to just change your drop spot to ensure that you're gonna get out of spawn every game. When preparing for a tournament, okay, there are a variety of things to consider. The first thing that you must do when preparing for a tournament is to establish an early, mid, and late tournament playstyle strategy. In other words, how is your playstyle going to fluctuate throughout the tournament session or from round to round? To properly do this, all right, you need to first understand how your opponents will progressively get better as a result of skill-based matchmaking. Picture a pyramid at the beginning of the tournament. Everyone starts at the base. As you gain points, you continue to move towards the point, and as a result, you play better opponents. So we know that in tournaments like Cash Cups, the players that are constantly placing, you know, fluctuate their play style throughout the tournament session. In early tournament games, all right, when they're at the base of the pyramid and the average skill level for that particular tournament is the lowest, they capitalize on that by shifting into a more kill dominant style of play, right? This means like, instead of just playing for placement points by typically avoiding fights, they are instead trying to rack up as many points as possible in their first couple of games before the average skill level opponents increases. You got it? Okay, so as the session continues, players begin to slowly shift into the traditional placement-oriented playstyle and just start to prioritize placement more than kills. We see that this is a fairly linear shift in playstyle. In other words, like there is a direct correlation between the average skill level of lobbies increasing and players' playstyle shifting to a placement-heavy prioritization. In mid-tournament games, players tend to fight less than in earlier games, but still take most fights they encounter. In late tournament games, players tend to avoid fighting more due to the average skill level being so high, making fights significantly riskier. So another extremely important thing to consider, guys, when you are preparing for a tournament is identifying how you're going to play around your strengths. A major factor in becoming a top Fortnite player is how well you self-reflect. Like, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? This ability is essential in preparing for tournaments because it should be considered when establishing your playstyle. You may be asking yourself, all right, what are some aspects of Fortnite I should consider when I'm self-reflecting? Well, okay, there are a limited number of factors to consider, but the most important ones to consider include how good are you at fighting? You know, like how well do you play late game? Are you a good rotator? And how often do you die off spawn? 
For example, if you are very mechanical, right? You're a mechanical player and you are extremely confident in fighting. You might decide that you want to take more fights later on in the tournament to increase your points. Okay, so on the opposite side of that spectrum, if you're very good at playing late game and get consistent placement points, it would be smart for you to avoid fights because you're a very strong late game player. Generally speaking, like this is only applicable to cash cups, right? Opens and sometimes semifinals of tournaments due to players in the final round of tournaments being super talented. So in finals, you know, you're pretty much forced to play late game due to the sheer number of players is alive throughout the games so meaning your play style is in a sense forced and you know doesn't really fluctuate throughout the session so in conclusion find your strengths and play around them and most importantly identify your weaknesses and just improve on them guys sometimes it is really hard to identify your weaknesses like i get it you know we we all recognize this and that's why proguys.com has the best coaches to help you guys improve we have implemented a new vod replay analysis system where you get to submit your replays and have them analyzed bro like crazy let us assist you in becoming a top player, all right? Pro Guys coaches allow you to become the best, the fastest. So check us out in the link description below for more information. Okay, so another important aspect of the game you need to prepare is where you're going to land every game and how you're going to rotate. In the world of competitive Fortnite, it's a very common practice to have mastered one, and in some cases, two drop spots and master a specific rotation within that drop spot, right? Okay, so the combination of mastering both the drop spot and rotation is best known as your loop path. It's also important to mention that in early games of tournaments like cash cups, this isn't always applicable. Like if you're prioritizing kills, you may find yourself hot dropping to try and just rack up as many kill points as possible. So with that being said, generally speaking, having an established loop path within a drop location, whew, it's arguably like the most important thing to have going into a tournament. The best way to master this aspect of your gameplay is really to pick a spot on the map that you tend to like landing at. Next, memorize all of the chest spawns, all right? Vehicle spawns and nearby fishing holes. Finally, practice fishing there to get even more comfortable. In general, you should familiarize yourself with all aspects of the drop, okay? So how long does it take for people to rotate into you? When do you, you know, need to leave for different zones? Are you often contested? What kind of loot do you usually get? Do you have time to fish? Like all of these things need to be considered and practice before every single tournament. All right, guys, so the final important thing to consider when preparing for a tournament is to make sure you are physically and mentally prepared. I say this all the time on Your Motivation Show. You guys got to check me out every Friday, 12 o'clock PST, because we're talking about mentality, man. Fortnite can be very stressful and overall mentally taxing. So the top players in Fortnite take this extremely seriously. Like the level of concentration needed to compete against other top players is astronomical. Your brain needs to be functioning at its absolute best to give yourself the best chance at success in these tournaments. So to ensure this, you must be getting enough sleep and you must be eating appropriately before tournaments and you must go into these tournaments relaxed, stress-free. So whatever you have to do, man, I'm telling you, you gotta do it. So sleep is something that is so essential to success in Fortnite and to some of the best players in the world as well. Like if you aren't getting enough sleep before a tournament, you're most likely gonna tilt easier, right? Because you're already stressed. You're gonna function slower and you're not gonna be at your peak mental capacity. So all of these things will make you play worse. Eating is equally important. Like your brain needs food to function guys no matter what you think due to fortnite being so mentally demanding your capability to focus and function at your peak capacity is so essential like if you deprive your brain of proper nutrition you're going to experience fatigue or a lack of concentration while playing which can be detrimental to your success in the upcoming tournament so if you want to be a top player, it is essential to eat before every tournament and get seven to nine hours of sleep the night before, man. If you got to do something to give you peace, listen to some music, you know, whatever, like read, like exercise, whatever you got to do before you play to kind of get your mind just at peace, do that as well. All right, so let's do a recap. Firstly, identify what format the upcoming tournament is and gather your preparations accordingly, all right? If the tournament has multiple sessions, you can prepare for each session individually. Establish your playstyle fluctuation and strategize going into your event session. How is your playstyle going to change from early tournament games to mid and late tournament games? Okay, third, identify your strengths, man. Like, what are you good at and how can you use that to your advantage during the tournament? Fourth, Familiarization with drop location and rotations, man. Woo, so important. Find a loop path that you're comfortable with and just master it. Prepare your body, guys. Properly eating and just getting enough sleep. You know, chill out, do something to make your mind at ease before a tournament, all right? 
All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's why your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, I was born to motivate you to be great. So keep going, guys. Don't settle because greatness is waiting on you. I hope you guys liked the video. And, uh, you know, we showed you the most important things to consider when in preparation for an upcoming event. So which one of these strategies do you think is the most important? Let us know in the comments below what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe with notifications on so you never miss out on a video that we got coming out. And bunch of crunch army, where you at? Keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going.